Welcome to Bread and Circus. Today's show is, uh, where's all my, um, psychiatrists? Psychiatrists. Hmm. I gotta really start doing these shows, like, earlier, not at, like, 3.30 or 4 in the morning. Where are all my psychology majors, my psych majors, huh? You know, the ones that say, oh, I wanna do psychology. They really have no idea what they're talking about, because... As we know, psychology is a broad spectrum, like, yeah, I mean, what do you mean? You want to do clinical? You want to do relational? You want to do, like, what, child? You social work? Like, what kind of, you know, what What do you want to do? That's just like me saying, I want to do communications. What do you want to do in communications? Communicate. <laughs> Today, we're going to be talking about genetics, nature versus nurture. You know, what brought me to this subject in the first place was, you know, I'm sitting in class and I'm paying attention to the lecture. The lecture being nature versus nurture. For those inquiring minds out there, <laughs> nature is the inherited traits of the genetic composition of an individual. You guys understand that, right? That, that you know, that, that's his nature. Like, this guy's angry. It's part of his nature. Something like that. Nurture. Nurture refers to environmental influences which, which molds a person's behavior. So basically, you guys heard of Jim Jones, right? He's balling. Jim Jones. His album was called Product of My Environment. Jim Jones unknowingly or knowingly was referring to nurture because his upbringing, his interaction with the environment, being an underprivileged African-American and, what is he, some, he's mixed, he's some type of hybrid, altered the way he was. Thus, he's a product of his environment. And that, that's nature versus nurture. So, you know, some distracting girl blurted out that, uh, you know, all men are genetic. All men are dogs. All men are liars. All men are cheaters. Hmm. Interesting argument. Very interesting. So basically, your dad, your brother, your uncle, your grandpa, the priest, who was making star on the priest jokes, all of, or because we're men with the XY chromosome, we're automatically cheaters. Environments have nothing to do with it. You messing things up had nothing to do with it. Or, you know, let's don't flip the scripts. That's just like saying that all women are hoes, which is nonsense. But, you know, that has nothing to do with it. It's just, just a linear approach. You know, and I had to put her in her place. I was like, well, logically speaking, I'm like, if that's really, that's, so your, your dad is, no, not my dad. Your, your dad's a guy, right? She didn't have nothing to say. I'm like, your linear way of approaching things is probably the reason why there are so many single men in this city, like, Come on, you're in school. You need to broaden. Well, you know what? I'm glad you're here. I mean, at least you're trying to uh, broaden your horizons and stuff like that. Now, I bring up this situation because it introduces a broader problem in our country. You know, it's genetic. Oh, it's genetic. So there's nothing we can do about it. Let's just spend millions of dollars with the healthcare industry and throw pills at everybody. Sounds interesting, right? How many people you know, or maybe you yourself, has been diagnosed with ADD or ADHD, which a lot of people think that these are genetically programmed diseases, like you're just stuck with it. It's nonsense. And now there's an Austrian physician, his name is Dr. Gabor Mate. He specializes in a study of treatment and addiction, stated that there are few people who actually have these genetically programmed diseases. Heart attacks, stroke, breast cancer, these are not genetically, these are not determined you know what I mean? It's not. It's not determined by genetics. Now let's get something straight here. Because genes, that's what we're talking about, are not just things that make us behave in a certain way, regardless of the environment. Genes allow us to express ourselves in a variety of ways to the environment. Example, 
raising a child in the hood versus raising a child I got a better example raising your child in the mean streets of Temecula versus raising your child in City Heights in San Diego Southeast chances are these kids are going to be very different and that's basically what we're talking about how the environment really plays a role now let's take uh, suicide victims for example an autopsy was done in Ontario on the brands of suicide victims. Turns out that people who commit suicide are normally young adults. You knew that. Who have been abused as children? You probably knew that. The abuse causes genetic change in the brain that are absent in the brains of those who have not been abused. You probably didn't know that. That's called the epigenetic effect. Epigenetic being our word of the day. Now, Epigenetic means it's the accurate process by which genetic information is modified by its environmental influences, which is then translated into you know substance or behavior of an organism. So basically, the epigenetic influence is what happens environmentally to either deactivate or activate a certain gene. You know, the gene to commit violence, or the gene to act crazy, or the gene to steal things. It's activated by something that has happened to you. You understand what I'm trying to say? Now, let's apply what we just told you, or time out, it was already done. There's an experiment in New Zealand in a town called Duhedin. They took a thousand individuals and studied them from birth till they were in their mid-twenties. In this experiment, the scientists actually found out that they could identify genetic mutation of an abnormal gene that had basically had the predisposition to commit violence. But this was found only in people who have been subjected to incredible, immense child abuse. Basically, a child with this abnormal gene would be no more likely to commit a crime, and in fact, may even have a lower percentage to commit a crime versus children where their abnormal gene was absent. So, just as long as the kid with their abnormal gene was not abused, he would be just fine. Well, let's ponder that experiment, which was picked apart by the media for obvious reasons, because the media is probably in bed with, I don't know, the government who finances the hospitals. I don't say finances, but they back the hospitals. You know how it is. Now let's think about the idea. Let's examine some kids that may have the abnormal gene and predisposition for ADD. Let's ensure that these kids are in a much more stimulated environment than your average kid. I'm pretty sure they'll overcome that deficit. Want to know why? Because I did. I was diagnosed with ADD, ADHD, STUPID, anything. <laughs> Stupid, not. Nah, I was actually diagnosed with SMART. No. Nah. But, uh, you know, my mom, God bless her soul. I love you, mom. Hi, mom. My mom would not allow that to happen. Now look at me. I mean, I'm in college. I. We're going to talk about me later. Obviously, I didn't succumb to my pre-genetic disposition of ADD. So, let's go back to the contemporary sense that uh, that chicken head that I just... That chicken head that I just uh, talked about earlier. You know, since genetic males or black men with attitude and genetics, you know, she was basically saying that there is an automatic genetic contribution to how we respond to environment. Our genes may influence the readiness in which an organism will deal with a certain challenge. But it's all the same. I mean, by that closed-minded thought, you might as well say that this person believed in eugenics. So, let's say we do, for argument's sake, believe that, hey, it is genetics, but we can't do anything about it. Let's apply violence to this predetermined problem. You know what that means, right? Well, I'm going to leave you hanging. I'll let you know what that means when I get to, you know, part two of what I have to say. No, nah, you know, forget it. I'm going to tell you right now. All right? So let's not change, let's, um, let's say, you know, let's not do anything about it. You know, let's say, hey, he's violent. You know what that means? Scrap the idea of preventative measures. Psychology, you guys are out of jobs. We're not going to no longer try to understand the problem because we don't believe it can be understood because it's a genetic problem. Um, counselors, you're fired. Principals, you're fired. Um, um, I already said psychology, right? Social workers, you're gone. All of you guys, you guys are gone. Instead, what we're going to do is build more prisons, execute more people. Let's not change the social environment or social preconditions that may have had a part in this, guys. 
poor woman's life to actually let him to become violent because there's no need to it. It's, it's genetics. This genetic argument does nothing but allow our society to ignore past and present historical and social factors. It's a cop out to and play, you know, it's a shortcut to make money via countless medicines, the prison industrial complex, you know, privatizing jails, becoming a number on Wall Street, you know. Overall, it's a stereotypical way to solve our issues. Yet we teach our kids not to take shortcuts, to be responsible, and to think critically and solve problems. Yet, we don't solve our own. And I have to tell you that that, my friend, is they homeless. I hate to say straight for long. I remember my last album was the front end. They want to know if he still got it. They say rap's changed. They want to know how I feel about it.